Hey, I get it. Promises are hard. I mean, they're not ArxJS hard, but still, there's some special stuff going on there. But don't worry, because after this video, you'll understand exactly how the JavaScript engine works, and you'll understand how that engine evolved over time to support promises. So let's get right into it. To explain promises, let's start by breaking down a JavaScript engine before promises came into the ECMAScript standard in 2015. At the core of a JavaScript engine is the call stack and the heap. Let's visualize the execution of this simple code to understand these pieces first. By running this code in a browser and setting breakpoints, we can see that as we make function calls, we are pushing these calls onto a call stack. And when functions return, they pop off the call stack. As variables are declared, they are added onto the heap. And once their closure scope closes, we can see that the garbage collection is stepping in to remove that memory from our heap. The call stack and heap is all we need for a synchronous procedure. Our program here simply consists of a set of instructions to run and we've got that covered. But JavaScript was created as a scripting language for the web, so it's meant to respond to any number of dynamic events on a web page that should trigger other functionality. So how do we handle that? This is where the task queue and event loop come into play. In a web browser, whenever an event with a listener occurs, like this button we've added an onclick listener to, the provided callback function won't immediately occur, but instead will get added to the task queue. Notice here that even though we're programmatically clicking on our button, we don't see any console logs yet for the button clicks, as we've only pushed these onto the queue. These won't begin execution until all the instructions we gave in our index.js file have occurred. Once we perform the very last action of printing index.js complete to the console, we can now see that we'll start dequeuing callbacks from our task queue. The job of the event loop is to dequeue any tasks from our task queue and add them to the call stack as soon as our one call stack becomes available. Note that because JavaScript is single-threaded, we only have one thread or one call stack that we can work with at any given time. This system of using callback functions to handle events is actually sufficient by itself for fully asynchronous JavaScript, and from 1995 until 2015, this is how the world worked. But in 2015, Promises entered the standard with ECMAScript 6, and a new mechanism was added on top of our JS system to support a new way of handling asynchronicity, the microtask queue. Let's take a look at this code first. We see our first two set timeouts are going to push onto the task queue, and they'll be dequeued in the order we added them onto the queue. But after creating our two set timeouts, we'll call QMicroTask. And in the callback we pass to it, we'll have it console.log QMicroTask. As we can see in the console, this console log is being executed before our set timeout callbacks. This is because when we create a promise, we are pushing the callback that we create the promise with onto a different queue, the MicroTask queue. Tasks on the MicroTask queue will always take priority over tasks in the normal queue as long as they are unblocked. And when it comes to promises, creating a promise via a callback will simply add that callback to the call stack immediately. But we can also create a promise by calling then on another promise. Calling then will add the callback to the microtask queue, and as long as the task is unblocked, it will get executed before tasks on the regular task queue. This can get a bit tricky. Notice here how the order of the then execution is preserved to match the order in which they are declared, even though promise 1 resolves before promise 2. As we can see, promise 2's then occurs first in our console. This is because when its turn in the microtask queue came, promise 2 had already been fulfilled, so the promise 2.then was ready to execute. Compare this though to the example where we delay the resolving of promise 1 and promise 2 by 100 milliseconds using set timeout. In this case, promise one will execute first as our set timeouts are pushing onto the regular task queue. So after promise one resolves, the promise created by promise one's then will become unblocked on the micro task queue and it will execute before the set timeout and promise two resolves. Like I said, promises are hard and they get harder in a node context when you have a next tick queue to contend with as well. But that's a story for another time. And if you wanna hear that story, be sure to like and subscribe and ask me any questions you have about promises in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And remember, difficult things are worth doing. With hard work and time, we can take something that's difficult and make it something that's easy for us. And that's one of the most rewarding things about our line of work. So until next time, keep working hard. And I'll be here working hard right alongside y'all. And I'll see you on the other side.